There is no doubt that West Moberly and other Treaty 8 First Nations are at the ground zero of the absolute devastation that Side C would wreak in the valley. But may, make no mistake, if Side C happens, we will all pay. We will pay through our hydro bills. We will pay through the loss of credit ratings. $9 billion is a whole heck of a lot of money to buy 165 jobs. The Geothermal Association, as of right now, says they would employ 20, 000, sorry, 2,000 people to produce the same amount of energy. And Treaty 8 right now and the landowners, the Peace Valley landowners, have seven court cases happening uh, on behalf of themselves and actually of all of us. And we had a bad experience with one dam on the river. It's called WAC Bennett. And it created a reservoir that uh, has a shoreline of 1,770 kilometers long. I'm not sure how many square kilometers it covers, but at its narrowest point, it's two kilometers wide. At its widest point, it's five kilometers wide and it's roughly 225 kilometers long. That reservoir killed a lot of animals once the flooding was complete. Whole herds of caribou drowned because they couldn't cross this great body of water because of all the debris that floated in the water from the forest that was flooded. They'd run out onto a, a floating debris up to 400 meters out, jump and swim across, then couldn't get out on the other side because there was debris on the other side and they swam until they drowned. And most of these animals that died were caribou, which is the reason why in the late 70s, my elders uh, told us we can't hunt caribou anymore until they can replenish themselves. And that's how come a few years ago, Chief Wilson, got a book printed called, I Want to Eat Caribou Before I Die. What's, what W.C. Bennett Dam did, Site C is going to do, except on a smaller scale, because it's going to be a smaller reservoir. It's going to only be 83 kilometers long, roughly two to three kilometers wide. So. What happened to the mountain unglets is going to happen to the foothill unglets, the deer, the moose, the elk. But it wasn't just ungulates. There was bears, there was fishers, there was martens, there was lynx, coyotes, foxes, wolves, wolverines that were found floating in that river or in that reservoir. And BC Hydro never, ever, to this day, ever told the general public, Mother Earth is sick. She's very sick. And that has been happening for a long time now. If Site C gets built, the water will not be healthy. There'll be mercury, methyl mercury from the trees it covers. There's going to be silt that's going to wash off the banks and float downstream. That river will no longer be a river of water. It's going to be a river of silt. I don't know. You know, I, I don't know when or who can really say, but... Someday soon, 
Mother Earth's going to die. She's going to stop producing. And we are, as a human race are going to die also. Everything here is going to die. And these people don't get it. Government and industry don't get it. We're going to need a lot of help to protect this mighty river. After all, in 2013, the Peace River was named the most endangered river in BC. In 2000, we ran a study um, because our elders were coming back from hunting and, f and they were informing us that they were finding moose. Um, the moose that they harvest, there was something wrong with them. They'd open them up and get, get ready to process them and, and get taken back and they would find um, not normal things in the body cavities, cysts, um, sores, foul smells. When you're dealing with wild, wild game, you get used to a certain type of smell. And when there's a difference in that smell, you notice it right away. And they would find green fluids in the body cavity, and, and so they would just leave it and go away. We ran a study uh, in 2004 called the Petroleum Contaminant Study, where we went out there and looked around to see what was going, what was happening. We found out that uh, we identified seven sumps and 13 flare pits. These are things that they use now on gas patch. Uh, out there, uh, we tested them and 75% of those sites were contaminated above and beyond federal provincial levels. So this is uh, one of the big arguments that the OGC had, Oil Gas Commission had, and the province was that, well, you can't prove that the animals are drinking this water and eating the soils. So we went out there and set up cameras. And this is the million dollar shot that we got. This is about a four year old, three to four year old young bull got his head down. This is actually the most contaminated site that we had found up there. And he's drinking the water on that site. And this is how the sites are. They look like just an open field. But they fenced off their clean water and left the other ones open still. You know, we had to go back and say, well, you did a good job there, but you know, you need to take that fence and put it over here, right? Uh, we don't mind them getting into the good water. We just don't want them getting into the bad water. BC Hydro announces that the mercury levels in the reservoir are diminishing. Well, our study, I don't know if everybody saw our little event that we did yesterday, but our study, we performed a study on the fish, and it's showing that it's not diminishing, it's actually increasing. Last year, this is my son again, I got lots of pictures of my son, because he's easy to take pictures of. <laughs> um, I bought him a fly rod. We went up the Sekunka River. This is one of the other rivers. This is something the province says. Well, go somewhere else. You know, you can, there's lots of places. Go somewhere else and fish. Well, we went up the Sekunka River. I took him fly fishing. He caught his first little fish on the, on the right, you know, and he was pretty excited about it. And then we caught a pike, which was kind of surprising because pike are usually lake fish and we caught it out of the river. But, you know, I showed him how to, to get it and get it ready. We're going to go home and we're going to cook it on the fire and you know he's going to feed the family. He caught the fish and he's going to provide for the family. We hopped in the truck and drove across the bridge and to turn around to head out and we found this sign on the other side of the road. It was nailed to the back side of the tree. And you can see the road in behind the sign there and the sign says notice the concentration of selenium in the waters of the Blind Creek is above the Canadian drinking water guidelines. Wow. What does that mean? <laughs> like, holy, does that mean, can we eat the fish? Or, or what? Now, there's a coal mine up Lion Creek. Um, and there's a coal mine on all these rivers, all these other rivers that we have there. And all these other rivers have selenium issues like this on them. So when the province says, go somewhere else, where do we go? Where can we go? And the early... I think it was in the early 50s, late 40s, BC ran a commercial fishery off of Mobley Lake and another lake there called Willem Lake for the war effort. They were catching the fish and they were feeding, feeding the, the troops out of that. And they over-harvested out of the lake. But five years ago, they came to us 
kind of with their hat in hand and, and their head bowed down and said, we have to inform you that you need to stop fishing the lake trout or they're going to become extinct. They're going to become extirpated out of Moberly Lake. We have to actually intervene and uh, develop a recovery plan. So we had to voluntarily shut down uh, the fishing on Moberly Lake. This is a lake that we live on. Uh, the lake trout are, are our salmon. You know, they're high fat content. They're like the bull trout and the, you know, the elders really like these. So we sit down and we start looking at, well, what is there? Um, George had mentioned that the caribou are threatened, the grizzly bear and the buffalo, mountain sheep, goats, um, they're all threatened right now. Uh, the, la the lake trout and Lake are uh, being extirpated. Oil and gas has polluted the water and contaminated the moose. We know that now. Um, there's a concern about the medicinal and edible plants of the spraying of herbicides and the um, um, oil and gas, the oil and gas process of <coughs> excuse me, cleaning up a site is called solution by dilution. That picture I showed of the moose with its head in the water drinking the pond, well, the company would go in there with a big pump, stick a hose in there, and then spray that water into the bush onto the plants and get rid of it. That's called solution by dilution, and then they would just bury the site. They'd bring in loads of dirt and they'd bury it. They wouldn't actually clean it up. The, uh, there's no studies ever being done on what happens to the plants when that, those things are being sprayed on them. So we have been involved in management, I guess, um, for generations, thousands of years. Um, up until BC Hydro, there was fish in the rivers and in the lakes and the streams. When BC Hydro came in, in the last 50 years, they've polluted the waters so much that we, we've lost the fishing industry up there. So this is the stuff that we have to face with. This is a comment from Sarah Palin. Everybody knows who Sarah Palin is. She's from way up north. And uh, it just, when I read this, it boggled my mind. I was like, how, does, how can anybody say something like that? You know, if, if caribou need to be sacrificed for the sake of energy independence, I say, Mr. Caribou, take one for the team. I talked about the fact that we f were fighting with a, a mining company. Well, this is the mining company. We never opposed mining. We opposed where this mine was. We asked the mining company, let's find another spot. They brought in this ADCAR system, which was a system where they were going to dig a trench and then sidewall mine in, and then they would dig another trench and move everything over and fill that trench up, and it was called active reclamation, which looked really good. We didn't know much about it, but it's, it looked much better than clearing the top of the mountain off with an open pit. We said, this is a good technology. It looks like a good technology. Let's just do it somewhere else. They ignored us. They went up there. Um, the uh, provincial biologist wrote a, a submission to the province saying, uh, if you do this, you're going to destroy the caribou. We've been working on trying to recover these caribou. You're going to directly destroy the core wintering range of threatened caribou. The provincial government ignored their own lead scientist and issued a bulk sample permit. And they went up there and they built this bulk sample pit up there. This is an accident. Before they built the bulk sample pit, this is why we wound up in this big fight, is we found out that there was activity going on in the critical wintering habitat zone of the burnt pine caribou herd. We sent somebody up there and they came back with these pictures saying, what is this? What's going on here? This company went out there without a permit, without a license, and cleared over 85 hectares of land right in the middle of the burnt pine caribou herd habitat. So Site C, going back to Site C now, um, is this... Site C is going to continue this up there. This power is not needed for homes. BC has told people that they need to power 400,000 homes in the province of British Columbia. That's a lie. That's not what this power is for. This power is for uh, development. They are going to 
need power for the LNG market. They're going to need power for all the mines that they have up there. So there's a solution, a workable solution, an alternative to flooding that valley and creating that energy. We know now, because Kangia, uh, Canadian uh, geothermal uh, organization, released a report saying that geothermal energy is completely 100% viable in the province of British Columbia and doable within the cost margins of what BC Hydro has stated. We are shipping gas out of the Treaty 8 territory to the coast. This is what they're planning to do. And, and turn it into LNG and ship it overseas to other countries so that they can burn it for energy. Canada is supposed to be a world-leading company, a world-leading country in technology. There's got to be a way we can figure out how to use the gas here in a cleaner means and use it as a bridge until we can figure out a better solution to flooding that darn valley. That valley should be protected, not destroyed. With what's going on in Calgary, uh, California, right now, you, you can't do it. So our little, um, little thing that we did yesterday was to try and wake people up to what's going on. Site C started as a $7 billion idea, a bad idea. It's now a $9 billion mistake. By the time they're done, it's going to be a $12 billion nightmare. And we're not going to be able to pay for it. It's going to be something that our generation is not going to have to, to deal with. It's going to be our grandkids that are going to have to deal with it. And, and you know, it's, it's not, it doesn't have to happen. They've made up their mind to do this and they're just doing it. And they're not listening to anything else. And that's what's wrong. And if we have to go to court and fight this thing, that's what we're doing, you know. So right now, like I'm hoping that you're all having heard all this thinking in your head, what can I do? Well, hopefully you also all have this little card that was handed out because this is part of the new campaign nosite-c.com. The funds will be gathered. You can do it three ways, actually. But um, the funds will be held in trust for the three nations, West Moberly, McLeod Lake, Indian Band, and Prophet River. And they will go to cover these legal fees. Site C, beside being... Um, an example of utter environmental devastation is also a social justice issue. It's a social justice issue, obviously, for First Nations, but also for everybody in the North who is currently seeing the price of their fruits and vegetables go up, and they will go up in the South as well as the California drought intensifies. A government with vision would recognize the potential of Site C to provide, as Sarah said, fruits and vegetables, the building blocks of nutrition for a million people. It would lift the shadow of the dam so that the farmers and landowners, some of whom have been hanging on for generations and putting their own substance into maintaining their farms because they can't afford to invest knowing um, that the dam might go in any time. A government would, with vision would lift the shadow of the dam and invest in, the, in a thriving agricultural sector that would provide food security for BC families. Um, if things continue uh, with plans for Site C, fruits and vegetables will soon become an item of luxury for BC families rather than a daily staple, first in the north and then in the south. At the end of the day, when we say this is a, a threat to fundamental human rights, you can disregard everything else that I've said. The basic test you can ask is, what are the First Nations saying? And since they're saying no, as Canadians committed to human rights, we have to say no as well. You've heard that these issues are before the courts. 
And these will be some of the most important court cases to go forward because they're going to pick up the standards that were raised, the standards that were set in that Sokotin decision, and they're going to take it that next step. These are decisions that go to the fundamental issue of whether this is a country that abides by the rule of law, whether this is a country that abides by its international human rights commitments or not, and these cases deserve your support. Thank you very much. What this government's doing, the provincial and the federal government, what they're doing to the land and the sea and the air is devastating. I hate to think what my grandchildren are going to have to grow up in. People have got to stand up and speak and do something to stop this madness. These big corporations, they own the government. If Harper passes that bill, C-1551, we'll be terrorists just because we're speaking here against things like this. I raise my hands to all of you. And it's time to say enough is enough. Hi, Scott. Yeah, I'll see you.